Hello, this is Travis Sabin from Adobe Analytics Product Management. and Today I'm going to be walking you through our new map visualization in Analysis Workspace. So when I drag and drop uh, the map viz onto my panel, I'm presented with a few configuration options. Um, the first thing I want to call out here is these two options here. You can either represent your data using mobile latitude and longitude data or um, our geographic dimension uh, data, which is the um, traditional IP address information that we collect. If you are using a mobile app enabled report suite, you'll be able to choose between these two options. And if you're collecting uh, latitude and longitude um, data via the mobile SDK, then that data it will be visually represented for you if you choose this option. If I change to a mobile web only report suite, then mobile latitude and longitude is grayed out and I'm defaulted to the geographic dimension option. Um, but I want to use both of these. So I'm going to come and use mobile latitude and longitude and I'm going to drop the launches metric on and I just drop a metric, choose which data type I want and then I click build and immediately I've got a map, a global view of um, my data and I'm going to expand this because I'm going to zoom in in just a minute and I can, as I zoom in, you can see that I have these bubbles and their uh, little clusters change dynamically um, with the zoom setting and the hierarchy that I'm, that I'm currently at as I move in to the map. And so um, there's a couple things I want to call out. Right now I'm zooming in just using my mouse and you can see it's really dynamic and easily adjusted um, and responsive to what I'm doing. You can also zoom in using the zoom keys on the map itself. And if you wanted to, you could click on this right here and expand the map to be a full screen view and you can still do some of the data manipulation and um, playing with it. You can click and hold to drag and move the map around. You can click escape to get out of um, that full screen view. And then if you wanted to, you can click control and click and hold and you can play with the map. You can invert it, you can move it all over the place. You can zoom in to get into a street view if you wanna get down and see what's happening right there or if you just wanna make a kind of cool looking visualization to send out for others um, as you're reporting on this. If you get stuck in a spot and it's hard to kind of reset the map, you can right click and you'll get this reset map option. You click on that and you'll start back out with your global view of your data. So I'm going to come and I'm going to zoom in to the United States because that's where I want to um, be for the purposes of this video today. So now I'm in here, I've got my different clusters um, throughout the United States. And I want to walk you through some of the other um, map editing options. So first of all, we've introduced this new wrench icon here. This allows you to um, essentially build a new version of this map viz. You can drag and drop a new metric in the same spot to replace it if you wanted. Or, and then you can also change um, the dimension type and click build and it'll um, automatically update. Uh, and then you click the wrench again just to collapse it. So if you want to change the data set that you're working with, you can easily edit it without having to start over and dragging a new map viz on. And then if I come up here into the gear icon, we have some additional settings that I want to walk you through. So we have two map types. This default one is the bubbles map setting and we have a heat map as well. I'll walk you through that in just a minute. We have some color and map um, styles that you can edit and I'll show you those as well. And then we have a cluster radius scale and a custom max value scale. And I'll walk you through both of those right now. So right now our default is to set a cluster radius every 50 pixels. If I change this and I make it larger, um, you'll see that I have less bubbles and there are larger clusters now because I'm making them group at a higher radius. If I wanna have more clusters, then I can decrease that. And now I've got a lot of little clusters um, showing up on my map. So if, that, if you want to get some contrast or see what's happening at a different scale, you can do that to edit um, how things are grouping together. And then let's say I'm, let's get me zoomed in a little bit, and I'm working here in the Midwest, for example. Right now, all these clusters are based on the larger data, the global data set. And so I'm not getting a lot of variance here in some of these smaller numbers. So I have 700 and 7,000 that all look pretty similar, but in this current zoomed in view, 12,000 is the largest one that I'm looking at. So let's say I want to have better contrast there. So that's why we have this custom max value. You can check that box and then you can either type in a value or you can find it using the slider. Let's say I want to make 12,000 my new maximum given that's the one I saw on my map. So I do that 
and I entered it, and now I can see I've got 12,000 as my largest cluster. It's the biggest one, it's the highest concentrated, and now I've got better um, variance here from my low values to my mid-range values, so I can see some better um, uh, discrepancies here and contrasts uh, along the map to help me identify uh, the differences in the data. And so we've introduced that, again, to just give you some of the freedom to change and um, edit how you're looking at some of this data to give you a better idea of what's happening when you're zooming in into a particular level. So if I zoom back out, let me show you some of the other um, color styles as well. So we default to this coral theme, but we have a red scaled theme, a green one, a blue one, and then we have this heat map one. This is the default we use for the heat map, but you can also use it in the bubbles to give you some uh, lots of different colors here. And then you can change the map style that's in the background. Um, our default is the light one, but you can do a basic view that strips away some of the other um, state and boundaries. We have a street view that we have. If you zoom in, you can play with some of the, you can see how your data is um, being visualized along the various streets and intersections. So if people are using your app while they're road tripping, you can check that out. We have a brighter version of the map, and then we have a dark version, which I think looks really cool in contrast to some of the colors. And then we have um, uh, a satellite view as well. So if you want to see if people are using it while they're out hiking or in some other topographies that might be a little bit different, you can um, change it as view and zoom in and see where and how people are using the app. So those are the different color themes and the different uh, and the map styles that you can play with, um, which are all, I think, really, really cool visually to help see your data. And then the only other thing I want to show you is the heat map setting. So I'm going to switch to our uh, dev report suite and change my option to the heat map. And again, as I mentioned, the color theme will automatically default to the heat map. The cluster radius doesn't pertain to the heat map because you're not creating the little bubble clusters, but you can still play with <clears throat> the custom max value. So you could do the same thing as you did before. But now I've got these little hexagon heat map representations all throughout the US. The purple, the light purple, indicates low concentration and as it moves along towards blue, green, yellow, orange, and then red is higher concentration. And so I'm gonna start zooming in and you'll see the little um, heat map hexagons adjust as I zoom in and I see the different concentration of usage. And so you can get in and see really where there's some high usage and it'll um, update as you're zooming in. If, if you zoom in too quickly and it takes a second to load, there'll be a little progress bar across the top which will help you see where and how um, that usage is breaking or how the map is loading and resetting and then you'll be able to see um, how that uh, data is represented on a, on a more zoomed in scale. So um, that is the heat map. Um, hopefully between the heat map and the bubble clusters, now you'll be able to better represent your data in context of location in analysis workspace and do some cool visual reporting to better understand some of the use cases that your users are, are doing with your websites and your apps. Uh, thank you for your time, and we'll talk to you again soon.